coming up on Inside the NRL. Rugby League remembers one of its original immortals. Steve Menzies pays tribute to the late Bob Fulton. The Blues back row stocks take another hit as two Roosters stars fight for freedom at the NRL judiciary. We chat to Nico Hines about what Indigenous round means to him and what the future holds for Melbourne's Mr Fixit and what's happened to Wayne Bennett's bunnies. South started the season as premiership contenders, but are they now pretenders? Hello and welcome to Inside the NRL. Thanks again for joining us as we build up to round 12 in the NRL Telstra Premiership. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Michael Chamis from the Sydney Morning Herald and Jamie Soud, uh, Dragons great, Dragons kicking coach, all the above. Uh, this week we lost last week, <laughs> maybe not this week. So I'll only, mean, I'll only mention the Dragons no, after we a win. win. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sadly, uh, the rugby league world is in mourning following the shock passing of Bob Fulton. He's a manly legend. He's one of the original four immortals who sadly passed away after a very secret battle with cancer. Now, Steve Menzies is one of the players that uh, was coached, lucky enough to be coached by Bozo at Manly. Here's his tribute. Uh, it was probably the most influential in my um, professional career, you know, bar none. He's, um, you know, he's... He was my first grade coach when I came in. He had a bit to do with me through the juniors. Um, and he allowed the style of play and my style of play to sort of, to encourage that and allow me to become the player that I was, you know. A, a different type of coach may have made it too structure oriented for me and um, that wasn't, that didn't suit me and he knew that and he allowed me to, um, to, to turn into the player I am. I think we just finished Jersey flag and I played New South Wales schoolboys and North Sydney sort of approached me and I wasn't under contract at Manly and North Sydney said we want to sign you and I went to uh, <clears throat> went over to, to North Sydney didn't tell anyone they said look keep this on the on the down low and me and my stepdad went there and met North Sydney we came home and two hours later the phone rang and it was Bozo he, he got on the phone and said I know you've been to North Sydney I know they've offered you five thousand dollars we want to sign you come down tomorrow Went down to his office and signed for the Seagulls. But we didn't tell anyone. It was, who knows how we knew. His game plans, he was ahead of his time. The, 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 you know, the way he used to dissect defences, um, when you didn't have it all online, it was, it was you know, the, the old VCRs and stuff, and he used to cut up videotapes. And um, yeah, his other great ability was to, to, to bond a team together and want to play for each other, no matter whether it was a good circumstance or a bad one, he would find a way to, to knit the team and make them stronger. Yeah, he, he had a great sense of humour. He loved, um, yeah, very passionate about the game. Um, yeah, he, he was just great to be coached by. You know, that's um, the, the the best. He he got the best out of yeah every player that played underneath, uh, underneath him. Yeah, a great tribute there from Steve Beaver Menzies. Uh, like Beaver, Jamie, you've got a story uh, about running yeah. for Bozo and having an influence on your career. He, uh, yeah, not necessarily while I was playing, but yeah, he was the voice on radio on the 2GB team, yeah, continuous call team with Ray Hadley and yeah, driving up from Wagga uh, to Sydney to see family and you'd be listening to those guys. And I've been lucky enough to be part of that team for the last couple of years and I got called in on a Saturday and I was very nervous because Bozo was there and Mark Levy and Dale Broman. And I sort of didn't really know how to, you know, just test the water with jokes and stuff like that. Anyway, I said something and it just slipped out. And uh, Bozo just went across and just gave me a knuckle. And for me, that was, I got in the car straight away. I read my step and I said, hey, mate, how did the show sound? He said, it's great. I said, mate, Bozo gave me a knuckle. Like, I'd only met him a handful of times and he just made me feel like I'd known him my whole life. And you listen to him talk footy and he was just so smart. So it can be sorely missed. But yeah, that was a, a moment that I'll cherish. For all of us, and I guess for a lot of people watching, it's hard to imagine rugby league without Bob Fulton. As a player, as a coach, administrator, as a media personality, Michael, can you remember someone that's had more influence on the game than Bob Fulton? Well, I think you, you hit the nail on the head, Zach. The reality is there are very few people in the history of, ga of the game and sport in general who can say he was the best, was up there with the very best as in terms of a player, up there as the very best in terms of a coach and as an administrator, there are probably no one more powerful than, than Bob Fulton as an administrator and, and Steve Menzies hit the nail on the head there, he knew what was going on everywhere and nothing got by in the game, uh, it wasn't that long ago that you, know, you couldn't get anything by in the game without Bob Fulton knowing what was going on or having his stamp of approval or over it, he, he was obviously the New South Wales selector for a long time, 
the Australian selector. He, he's just, in every facet, he's, he's the greatest, in the discussion for the greatest in three different departments and very few will ever say that. And um, obviously, they speak about him as one of the greatest players for Manly, but obviously as a coach as well. Ken Arthurson, the godfather of Manly. It feels like Bob Fulton is Manly, was Manly. Josh Schuster. Now, this is almost a legacy of what Bob Fulton meant to the club. Sign him as a 14-year-old. Yesterday on the day he passes, he has a breakout game. And it just shows the influence he's had across the game in his career. Yeah, I think he texted his son, actually, and said, you know, I know you're feeling pain and reading that story, but Schuster yesterday is, you know, I watched this kid as an 18-year-old lose to... The Illawarra Steelers in an SG Ball Grand Final, and he was, you know, one of the best players in the park. And you can see already, you know, the elite guys or the, some of the best players in our game have an elite eye for talent. You think about all the players that Arthur Beetson brought down, you know, to the Sydney Roosters. You hear, you know, unfortunately, we don't hear about it too much until they pass away. But you know, Bozo, Simon, and Schuster, what a what a pickup. Michael, given the performance we saw from Manly against the Eels yesterday, are they a genuine contender, top four contender? Oh, I th well, they're on the way up and there's some teams on the way down in that top four. I think we saw South Sydney now that two weeks they've been put 50 on. I, I, th I think Manly are the type of team that if you play them in finals, you'd be worried. You you'd want to avoid Manly at full strength. They lose Tom Trebojevic and perhaps you want to get them. But um, with Tom Trebojevic firing, that team is a genuine chance at knocking off one of the top teams in the game that matters. There's a concern coming up. If this was two rounds to go before finals, yes. Origin. There's still a long way to go. Full, at full strength for me isn't... Yes, they're, they're one of the hottest teams. I've got them very high in my power rankings right now. What does that look like in 12 weeks' time after Origin? You know, how do they deal with a couple of injuries? Are they the biggest threat to a Panthers Storm grand final? Yes. You, you're that caught, even now, we, as you said, they've got to go through... Well, the yeah, they've got to go through that. But if you're looking at everyone fully fit, no, Parramatta had a chance yesterday to make a statement to the rest of the competition. They didn't do it. Now they've got a chance to back it up this weekend against a struggling South Sydney side. But I just thought it had to be one of those two teams. South can't win it. They cannot win it. Yeah. I, I disagree, South. I think South, as long as they're there, they're going to... They're kind of, they've got the senior players. I, I just think... Those guys have been through it so often. The hunger is there to win a premiership. Once you get them into final football, you won't see a Mate, they've let in 200 points in four no, games. No, I know. 200. I know. I know. Not over the season. Yeah. Penrith no, are it's, going it's on track to let under 200 for the well, season. you know what Wayne's like. They get in the finals, it's another competition. But that's, that's the reason. I know what Wayne's like. And this isn't, this isn't a Wayne Bennett team. Mm. Yeah, they've got great attack, mm. but great attack against the rest of the competition... Yesterday, they didn't have great attack. So they, they, they couldn't stop anyone. They went into round nine on the back of seven straight wins. They lose by 50 to Melbourne. Two weeks later, it's 56-12 against the Panthers. So you've changed your tune saying they cannot win the comp, shall we? Correct? Yes, red line. Okay, so Wayne Bennett, the greatest, or arguably the greatest coach of all time, you've played under him, was lost for answers after this match yesterday. So how do they revive their season? Can they revive their season? They, well, they can. It's, I mean, like Chama said, but you've got to be able to stop teams. Like who, everyone's saying who's stopping Penrith. Yeah, who's stopping Melbourne? They're, they're the two top teams played in last year's grand final have scored 100 points total in two weeks. Now, you can okay, say... The next best team that we all thought. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. So, uh, yeah, it'd have to be... They'd all have to play their best game, and it may just be that one game that you just catch Penrith a little bit tight or Melbourne a little bit tight and you make a grand final. But hey, no one can see... No one can see South making a grand final. No... Oh. I take, but go back to the Manly conversation. The thing that worries me about Manly and potentially a little bit of Souths is you look at Penrith. If they get injury in key positions, if Nathan Cleary or Luai get injured, Matt Burton comes in. The centre gets injured, you've got Naden sitting there. Dylan Edwards gets injured, you move Crichton. Like they've got depth to cover, look, That's, they, and they're going to need that after Origin. This is if a Manly question. lose Tom, season's over. Parramatta. Manly lose Daly, season over. Parramatta. Yes? Yes or no? Uh, I'd like to think that would be a chance. I, I'm not writing Parramatta. I'm not writing them off, but they took a big step backwards yesterday. All right, as I said off the top, the Rugby League world is in mourning following the passing of Bob Fulton. Our thoughts uh, with his family and friends at this present moment. Well, Bozo had a great influence when it came to the New South Wales Rugby League as well. He was once a selector and the current selectors, including coach Brad, Brad Fittler, have a couple of headaches. Angus Crichton and Victor Radley will front the NRL judiciary to fight for their freedom. Radley will miss one week after accepting one of his two charges, while Angus Crichton is fighting a two-game ban. They're already skinny south when it comes to their back row stocks. No Boyd Cordner, Cam Murray is racing to be fit. If they lose these two guys, what does that do for their chances in game one? Oh, they'll, they'll find someone to do the job. I think Angus Crichton will be okay. 
Um, Cam Murray's a big one. If he's fully fit, they'll be able to get him in the back row, but they'll just have to pick someone. You've got guys that are in form. This is the thing. I think Angus Crichton will be okay. Yeah. You think he'll get off? Yeah. Okay. Regardless, though, he's the informed back row in the He's goal. the best back row in the world. Uh, but they've got hey, other hey, guys. Hey, hey, David Fafita would have something to say about that. Well, consistency, consistently. Mate, are you serious? I'm asking you. Would he have this something to say about that? This show is only there to go half. <laughs> Mate, Angus Crichton's been the best back row in the world for the last 18 months. Okay. There you go. But Jack you know why? Because he does it every single week. Um, look, oh, they, they're going to have to move some people around. You know, Isaiah Yo's played a little bit of time in the back row. Maybe they bring Jake Trebojevic and they start Yo on, on, a, on an edge. So we're going to have to wait and see. But Liam Martin, you've got some, a couple of little bolters there that will fancy their opportunity. If they have a big game this weekend, they might find themselves in a Blues jersey. Can you risk Tavita Pangua Jr.? You know, no. You wouldn't do it? Well, you said can you risk it? Too big of a, in terms of what, the new rules? Or would you have risked it beforehand? Um, again, I need to see... See, or, this is a misconception. When I played Origin... Yeah, I had to perform for 18 months and perform through final series before I even got a look in. Mm-hmm. You know, we had, I had my best year personally in 09, 10 we win the comp. I didn't play Origin until 11. Now it feels like we have two good games and we want to put guys into a Blues team. You've got to show something, a large body of work. Well, he's had two Jerome Lewis showed 18 years. months of, <laughs> of body of work, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, well, I, I mean, that's, the, that's the position we might end up in with the, the, ser- the seriousness of the injuries and the suspensions at the moment that... Perhaps someone left field. Like Liam Martin, like he's had 12 good months. But if you said to me, you wouldn't even know who Liam Martin was 12 months ago. So it's... He'd be, at the, he'd be in front of P- Pango Jr. for me. Okay. In a further uh, potential headache for Brad Fittler, Ryan Pappenhausen, he had an assurity on the number 14 jersey. He looks like he could miss out uh, with another three or four weeks on the sideline. So your new utility option on the bench is a Jack Whiten, Clint Gutherson, or your man Matt Burton? <laughs> Uh, you sent Twitter into I, I overdrive like the idea last night. of Matt Burton. I, look, I, I get that. I think that in a game, if you throw Matt Burton into the game after 50 minutes with the game on the line, it's a big ask for a kid. And perhaps someone like Jack White provides more utility value. But I, I like the idea of Matt Burton somewhere in. If it's 18th man, maybe I, I'd even feel comfortable with him playing left centre the way he's going at the moment. I, I think he's the best centre of the comp this year. Uh, you, would you agree, Sal? He's been the best centre this year on form. Okay, tell me who's been better this year on form. I'll have Jack Whiten. So you didn't answer as my question. As 14th man. You didn't okay. answer the question. We've got plenty of tries. I'm, I asked you a question. We focused on the Blues last week. We're focused on them now. But yeah. it's now time to turn our attention to the Maroons. Uh, Paul Green in his first series has a couple of headaches of his own. It looks like Harry Grant won't be fit and Josh Papali'i will be suspended. So, Paul Green, over to you, Jamie Soward. You're the yeah. coach. Yeah, I've got uh, Callum Ponger back. I think he'll be ready to go. AJ Brimson, either or. But I think Ponger's my first choice. Holmes and Coates on the wing. That's, you know, I guess for New South Wales, that's very scary. Gagai, Kate Will did the job last year. Uh, Christian Welch up front. Reed Marnie, I think, to his spot. Mo Fodawaka, now he's my bolter to start. He was fantastic on the weekend for the Titans. And you look at that back row, that might be the back row for Australia for years to come. Fasil Malawi, he can play up front. No Ben Hunt for me. Moses Embi is there, the utility to be able to play centre, play hooker, play 5'8", play fullback. Uh, and selfishly, uh, Ben, I want him for the Dragons as well. So, uh, I've got a little bit of mix on, on an edge there, the guys that can play on an edge but also step up and play in the middle. Cohen Hess is actually having a pretty good year uh, once he started to move into the middle. Michael, any differences with your 17? Pretty similar to be honest with you. A um, couple of positional changes in terms of starting and bench which really you could go either way with Fodder Waker or Jai Arrow starting. I, I, it, the thing is with Queensland, there's there are guys there you look at. Outside that 17 is maybe three or four more that you could pick. but. It's pretty self-explanatory, the Queensland team, I I think. The only one I'm I'm sort of looking at is if Cameron Munster, and we'll speak to Nico Hines later and find out a little bit more, if he's unavailable, do you play Caelan Ponga at six and move Brimson to one, Sally? Can you do that in origin? No. You can't. So who's your six then if Munster's unavailable? Don't know. Ben Hunt comes into the house. Ben Hunt, probably at seven. Cherry Evans at six. Yeah. Don't care, it's Queensland. (laughs) Come on, let's go. Josh Publier would be out, though. Who's their forward forward leader? Uh, Christian Welch. I think he's been underrated. He's such a good player. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. All right, well, round 12 is a very special round in the NRL as it marks Indigenous round. So it's a time for us to look back at the great Indigenous players, including yourself, <laughs> and celebrate and embrace the current crop. Yeah. How proud are you to, to look at this 2021 crop of Indigenous players and you sit back? You must be extremely proud. Yeah, well, the game's come a long way in celebrating Indigenous round and being able to ha- celebrate the Indigenous players past and present. And we're going to talk to one very shortly, but it's, it's a huge honour. 
on. I, I was lucky enough to play with Jonathan Thurston and play against him. And you think Indigenous round, you think of the great Indigenous players that have played in the modern, modern era. Thurston, Hodges, Inglis, you know, those guys have led the way uh, to what the round is now. So without those guys' support and telling their stories and getting back into the community, we wouldn't have Indigenous round. Well, as you said uh, just then, uh, it's now time to talk to one of the brightest young talents in the game on the Indigenous front, Melbourne sensation, Nico Hines. Nico, thanks so much for joining us on Inside the NRL. Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks for having me. As a proud Indigenous man, what does this round mean to you? Um, yeah, it means a lot. You know, I get to represent my, uh, my mother, who's the Indigenous side of me, and um, you, know, you get to put smiles on young people's face from the Indigenous communities. And, um, yeah, I think it's a, a massive round for everyone to be proud of, especially the, the Aboriginal people. Nico, what's your connection with your culture and how has Rugby League changed your perception or enhanced your experience in regards to your culture over the last couple of years? Yeah, well, my uh, grandfather, who's my mother's dad, who I unfortunately never got to meet, he's a Wiradjuri man and he was born in Griffith. Um, so that makes me a Wiradjuri man as well, obviously. And uh, I grew up on the Central Coast. Uh, New South Wales and I like to represent the Dark and Junk people too and um, you know they, they've looked after me there on the Central Coast um, and uh, what was the second part of that question sorry I'm saying in terms of, <laughs> in terms of rugby league and what you've learned about your culture how, how has that uh, enhanced your experience and, and your knowledge of your culture and history yeah well uh, firstly at the Corey knockout I played in the Griffith three ways team and got to play with um, Andrew Fafita and uh, a couple of family friends, best mates of mine, and uh, Andrew's younger brothers, TJ and, and Kyle. And um, firstly, we thought that uh, my mum's dad was born in Grafton, so I, I went by the Bundjalung tribe there for a bit there. And um, you know, they wanted to find out more about me and who I was. And uh, rang my mum and, and checked her birth certificate. And um, yeah, he was he was born in Griffith for her, her father. So um, the stars aligned that weekend that I was playing for Griffith. And, and turns out I was a proud Radry man. And um, yeah, it's taught me a lot, especially coming to the storm and seeing a player like Josh Adokar and how proud of a Aboriginal man he is. And um, yeah, he, he represents really well. And, and I look up to him a lot. Nico, how proud or how much has Josh Adokar's influence on you opened yourself up to learn more about your culture, but also, yeah, it must be pretty, uh, pretty good to have him there leading the way for Indigenous uh, heritage at the Melbourne Storm. Yeah, he's, he's massive. Um, Coming to the club and, and get, I already knew Joshy, but getting to know him further and on a personal level, is it's unbelievable. And, the way he he goes about his things and and represents his people and how look, even that video just there and, and, and being so proud and, and you know it makes people emotional that sort of stuff and he's he comes out and, and speaks his mind about you know racism and and whatnot and uh, just seeing him around the community and him representing himself and his people uh, at games at training um, just everywhere and it, it makes me very proud to be his teammate and, and something I, I, I'm inspiring to be as well. Nico, you've had involvement in the NRL school to work program. You've seen the benefits. How important is education in bridging that gap and helping Indigenous Australians? Yeah, it's massive. And I think it's really important that we give um, Indigenous Australians the, um, the leverage and, and the education they deserve. And, and you know, some people um, forget about the history that uh, the Aboriginal people have, and it's the longest living history in, in the world. So uh, the NRL school to work program is unbelievable and they're doing a really good job and Lyndall um, is our one at the storm and she's doing a terrific job and I'm really looking forward to working with her more and, and going out to schools and, and showing my face and seeing all the good work that they do because it's, yeah, it's really important that they get an education and because and, they deserve um, everything they get. Nico, it's time to talk a little bit of footy. You're off contract at the moment. How hard is it to concentrate on playing good footy for the Melbourne Storm but also knowing that you've got a big decision coming up very soon about your future? Uh, yeah, I'd probably be lying if um, I said I wasn't thinking about it and it wasn't playing on my mind a lot. Um, but in saying that, it's it's easy to, to come to training here at the Storm and, and, and play good footy and you want to play good footy for your teammates here and, and the coaching staff and it's easy to forget about when I'm in that in that sort of mood um, on game day. So, But yeah, I, I would be lying right now if, if I were to say that it, it's not playing on my mind um, before I go to sleep and when I wake up. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's obviously a big decision to to have for me in the next couple of weeks or so. So um, I'm looking forward to, to finally getting it done, but um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big one for me, I think. If a club is out there looking at Nico Hines, are they recruiting you as a fullback or are they recruiting you as a 5'8"? Because your skill level, you've played 5'8 your whole life, but you go to the Melbourne Storm, you work with Billy Slater, they turn you into a fullback. What is your preferred position? 
Um, if they were recruiting me, I'd probably say both. Uh, I, I grew up playing in the halves and um, only ever played fullback when I come to the Storm. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to play six, seven or one. Uh, just turns out at the moment I'm, I'm playing one for this team and I'm uh, really enjoying my time here at fullback and, and, and enjoy playing with the likes of Munster and Hughes and Smith and Grant, um, you know. So <laughs> he worked, working with those guys is uh, pretty handy and uh, makes my job a lot easier. But, um, yeah, I've, I've been pretty vocal in saying that I want to be a starter in the spine over at, in the halves or at fullback. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Nick, obviously you served your apprenticeship there and uh, done a fantastic job with Melbourne. The reality is, mate, obviously with Pappenhaus and Jerome Hughes and Munster there, that's very unlikely that you're going to be a permanent fixture of that side going forward. So, so what are you looking for in a club? Is a successful club important to you or are you just looking for a chance? What the? Yeah, sorry, that was Josh Adam's car. Bring him in. Get him in the chat. Josh, you come in. It's the inside NRL. We're just talking about you, actually. I was just giving you a wrap. Foxy, <laughs> how are you? How are you, bro? I'm good, bro. What's happening? We're just talking about Indigenous. <laughs> we're, we're talking about Indigenous round. Uh, this line? It's yeah. life. Don't Res- rescue you, mate. <laughs> contract talk. So, uh, what does Indigenous round mean to you? Uh, very special round, bro. Um, something to look forward to every year. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, we're really really disconnected to our culture and the outside world, and uh, just for a round like this, um, just to acknowledge. Um, yeah, our culture is pretty special and love being a part of it. And obviously, a lot of clubs want uh, Nico Hines at their club next year, but uh, are you in Frank Panisi's and Craig Bellamy's ears? No, he's, he wants Trent him Barrett's in the Bulldogs. Oh, no, he's of course. Trent he's just texting Dogs. Trent Barrett and just saying, Baz, we need him there. Yeah, you're talking to Baz? <laughs> Who, my dad, Baz? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, all right, Foxy, um, you, can, you can run away. We can keep grilling uh, Nico about his future. Thanks, Bar. <laughs> <laughs> just back to, the, I think Michael just asked the question. Obviously, you want to be a starter, and that's probably the, the main thing that could dri- drive you away from Melbourne. But how do you weigh that up against success when you're at a club like Melbourne who are genuine premiership contenders each year? Yeah, it's going to be um, really tough if I do make the decision to leave Melbourne. And uh, I've, I've had to sit down with the people here at the club that um, I've needed to, and they uh, really want to keep me. And uh, yeah, look, it's it's most important thing is for me to be happy uh, wherever I go and um, off field that is and uh, if you're happy off field and uh, you're going to be playing some good footy on field so it's got to weigh up those sort of options and yeah obviously being at a good club and uh, good coaching staff and, and good players as well is, is really important because you don't want to go to a, a club and, and not win football games you want to go somewhere and, and really uh, strive for a premiership and semi-final football and just win games of footy as well and um, yeah everything going to be weighing up on my decision um, but most importantly I, I've got to be uh, happy off the field and um, yeah so I'll be I'll be weighing up a lot of different things and uh, hopefully get that done soon. Nico you take on the Broncos this week are you meeting Kevy before or after the game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe at half time. <laughs> uh, well said Nico thanks so much for joining us on Inside the NRL good luck this week and uh, good luck with that big decision you have to make in the next couple of weeks. Thanks guys thanks for having me. Nico Hines, fresh of fresh air, as is the Fox. <laughs> I wasn't on the ball there, was I? About nah, the you weren't. No. Uh, you, yeah, you, <laughs> you want to re-sign him at Melbourne. Fox is like, no, thank you. Know, <laughs> of Canterbury. Um, from uh, one of uh, the current mod- modern-day, I guess, players that have established themselves over the last couple of years to one that played his first game on the weekend, 17-year-old Joseph Sawali in the most anticipated debut in more than a decade. What did we learn from his match on the weekend, Sowie? He's going to be a good player. He's you know, got involved, 121 run metres against the side that is not, you know, the side that he envisioned coming into was probably Kiri passing him the ball and the alpha front foot with the forward pack, but they got resold a little bit on the weekend. But yeah, he had some good touches. I think he's going to be a, a star in our game. Michael, Josh Morris could be back as early as this week from a back complaint. Does Joseph Swaley remain in the Roosters 17? Depends on what they think of their halves. Do they think they need to change things up? Because there, there has been talk for a little while that Joseph Manu could be their sixth option with Sam Walker. So if that's the way Trent Robinson wants to go, then yes. But if he doesn't, then I think Sawali sits and has a little break. They need to bank a couple more games before Orig- Like They need to bank this weekend against the Raiders. OK, so does that mean he's in or out? Uh, yeah, I like Lock and Lamb. I think he's yeah, a little bit a little bit hard done by. I think they just keep it as he is. He misses this weekend. Okay, it's now time to look at this week's Casualty Board, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. 
And after some long injury lists in recent weeks, it pleases me no end to say it was a reasonably quiet weekend on the casualty ward front. Unfortunately, still a number of HIAs though. Cody Ramsey, one of three Dragons players to go down on Friday night, while Josh Mansour also suffered a head knock in the loss to the Panthers. The Raiders are hopeful Tom Starling could face the Roosters. The news isn't good for the Cowboys. They'll be without Connolly Lemuelu for up to six weeks with a centre requiring surgery on a fractured thumb. The Panthers lost Dylan Edwards and Moses Leota before kick-off, but neither are expected to be sidelined for too long. The Storm will be hoping to have Jerome Hughes and potentially Cam Munster back next week. But as we discussed before, Harry Grant and Ryan Pappenhausen are unlikely to be fit for Origin 1. Caelan Ponga and Bradman Best could be back for the Knights as they fight for their season against Manly on Sunday. And the news keeps getting worse for Canberra. Chance Nickel Klukstar will require neck surgery in, and is unlikely to play again this year. From the casualty ward, it's now time for Hit or Miss. And he's been on fire in recent weeks. Reese Walsh will be a bigger signing for Nathan Brown than Kalen Ponga. Jamie oh. Salad. Oh, I was hoping to go to you first. Ooh, yeah. um, God, he's good, Reese Walsh. And good looking. Very good looking. <laughs> Very, very good looking. Um, I'll say no, miss. I think Kalen Pong is, you know, that elite talent. Sometimes we get caught up in the moment and recency bias, but this kid's so good. Like, that pass there, a set before, it, it nearly goes the intercept. Tommy's allowed and nearly goes the length, and he goes back there and, and comes up with a play. So uh, I just watched Reese Walsh play, and I just can't imagine why the Broncos would have ever let him go. So, but I'll say miss, because Kalen Pong has got a larger body of work. Michael? I'm going to say hit. Uh, Kalen didn't get Nathan Brown to a final series, and I think this kid will. I think um, oh, I think the competition's a little bit different, though. I think teams seven and eight are going to be probably on less wins than they had been in the past, but Reese Walsh is going to make it life a lot easier for Nathan Brown. Unfortunately, so, Kalen didn't get him the results. All right. Appy Coruscant must be the Blues, number nine for game one, Michael Chamis. Well, physical questions today, Zach. Did you make them up? He could. Oh. <laughs> Stay humble. What was that? <laughs> I, about I, me. I'm going to say questions. I'm going to say miss for now. I, I think if he doesn't, Damien Cook's under pressure. There's no doubt he hasn't had a, a good start to the year. They don't win game one, then I think you have to bite the bullet and, and play happy with with Nathan. So hit or miss? Whatever I just said, he would miss. Uh, no, no, miss. Yes, that's right. It's miss for me, but Freddie and the coaching staff have a decision. If you go with Luai and Cleary, it almost forces your hand a little bit to put Appy right there in that conversation. I agree. Uh, I don't do it too many times, but I agree with this Pelican here. Uh, if they lose game one, he might find himself, you know, Appy Coruscant might find himself in the Blues jump. There's two big decisions if they lose game one. At some point, the Tommy, the Tommy question is going to come up. Do you play him at one if they lose game one? And I think the other one's going to be Appy for Cook. He'll be, no, because he'll I'm be just captain. saying it's going to come up. I'm not saying, no, no, not drop Tedesco. I'm just... We can't Tedesco. play him anywhere else. I don't else. know. Oh, please. I'm just saying if they lose game one, we're going to all be sitting Please, here asking the question. Just relax. Okay, if it's a hit or miss question in three weeks' time, you owe me $34. <laughs> a dollar for every player on the field. Okay. 36 because we've got a concussion now. 18th man. All right, so uh, the Broncos beat the Roosters on the weekend. So Kevin Walters is the right man to rebuild the Broncos, shall we? Uh, I'm going to say miss at the moment because of what I've seen. They've had really good weeks and then they've had really big drop-offs and I don't know how many fireworks you can let off before a game before it gets tiresome. So I want to see them back up this week. Now, if you ask me next week and they back it up with an effort against the Melbourne Storm, you know, then I start to change my mind. But I just can't get out of my head the fact that they competed with Penrith for so long in that game, just lost, and then a week later they go to Darwin and they look like the team from last year. So I'm just going to wait and see. But Albert Kelly, good to see him back. Uh, hit me. I'm going to edge it to third man for now. I just, no, you're not. Yeah, I'm going no, to edge not. it to third man. I don't think... I'm not convinced either way. I, I can't answer that question because the, the talk at the start of the year was from people in, within the game that Kevy wasn't quite ready to take the step. There's glimpses there, but oh, there are also signs that he's not ready. So This is still a glimpse. That's a glimpse. But there's glimpses either way. Yeah. So I, I just, yeah, I, I'm edging through to the third, through, through the how, slips. How is that fence through. you're sitting on at the moment? That's okay. You can edge every now and then. Snicko's working. <laughs> All right. Panthers, Origin hopefuls should be rested for this weekend's match against the Bulldogs. Michael Chamis. No, nah, miss. I don't like it. Uh, the time for resting will be later, uh, after the series, when they actually may need it. They don't need it right now. They're buzzing. Get the win, get into Origin. And I don't think... They're young, they're fit, they're... Yeah, just wait till after Origin and, and deal with it then. 
hit. What? I've got a bit of a conspiracy theory. I think Melbourne are doing it right now, being very cautious with their star playmakers. They know they're in a good position. Um, all that matters this year for Penrith is if they win the competition or not. We don't care if they go through undefeated to the, to the grand final. If they lose the grand final, that's two years in a row they've dominated the competition from start to finish and haven't won the competition. Now, that's, that's a huge amount of pressure. So, you know, a lot's going to happen through this Origin Series. They're going to have a lot of players. I just think it might be a chance to give them a bit of a rest. That's not good for my fantasy team. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, <See>? Michael. <laughs> Tom, for you to give it a rest and for you to give us your champ or chump for this week. Yes, my champ or chump. We start with champ or chump. We're starting with champ. Well, champ for me is the, the Cavini Silktails captain, uh, Penioni Tagi Tuimua. Uh, on the weekend, the scenes out there at, with the North Sydney Bears. Played Ron Massey Cup, moved up to the North Sydney Bears for the New South Wales Cup, and fantastic to see the scenes. If we'll take a look, hopefully, um, here at North Sydney Oval, I think it was. So, was that North Sydney Oval, Zach? Yep. Yeah, so he was the first Silk Tales, he was the first Silk Tales player to go from Ron Massey Cup and for anyone that doesn't know the story they've come over for the first time from Fiji to play a special it doesn't, many, doesn't matter how many times you hear that Fiji in here no, it's, it's special. special that is special that's, that's really the cool. future of our game the Pacific Islands tapping into that region and, and getting as much talent from over there it'll help the game to no end ok and your chump of the week my chump of the week I, I just felt Will Chambers we know his reputation in the game and I just felt it was unnecessary just as soon as they kicked the match winning field goal, there were a few scenes here. He was just into the Dragons players, sledging them. There was more than this. I just felt that was inappropriate after such a good game, a football exciting finish. Look at that, the teammates are celebrating. He's into the Dragons. I just felt that was ordinary. That's my chump of the week, Will Chambers. Are you with me, Sally? Will's Will. I've oh. had it. I've been on the end of Will's sprays. I, just, I, I know Will's you watching. Just, they what just a, won what a game you... of football. Chad Townsend kicked the field goal to win the game. Go celebrate with your team. Will's a big fan of the show, and if you cross paths with him in the car park after <laughs> the show, will you turn to water? I don't know where he lives, Will. <laughs> yeah, I won't be calling him a chump to his face, but while I'm sitting here in the safety of Jamie Soward, I'll... Oh, please. <laughs> All right, NRL Teams is back tomorrow afternoon. Make sure you join Brett Kamali and Robbie Farah as they bring you all the latest team news for Round 12. As soon as the team lists drop, they'll be on air from 3.55pm Australian Eastern Standard Time before the teams are announced at 4pm. Michael, thanks so much for joining me. Jamie, same to you. Thanks, Better luck to the Dragons this week. Uh, thanks for joining us for another show for Inside the NRL. Enjoy Indigenous Round in Round 12 of the NRL.